Do you want to know one of the most powerful prompting tricks in the book? You know, the kind of images that are almost guaranteed to grab people's attention. Let me introduce you to Nolling. What on earth is Nolling? Nolling is probably one of those prompts with the highest return on investment, especially for beginners. And it literally works on almost anything. If you'd like to know more about what Nolling is, how you can use it to your advantage, and why it's going to replace a ton of stock photography on the web, then stick around. If you've never heard of the term Nolling before, don't worry. Neither did I until just recently. It's one of those things where you basically know what it is, you've seen it a ton of times, but you just weren't aware of the fact that there's a technical term for it. Nolling is a way of organizing objects by laying them flat on a surface and arranging them in a grid pattern at 90 degree angles. It's a method that is used to visually organize tools, materials, or equipment in a clear and an efficient manner. And if you have even the mildest form of OCD, then I think you'll be able to appreciate the value in that. The technique was popularized by artist Tom Sachs, and it is often used in art studios, maker spaces, and workshops to promote creativity and organization. Nolling can be applied to pretty much anything, from art supplies to kitchen utensils, to create a visually pleasing arrangement. And because Nolling also tends to have such a great aesthetic to it, it's also extremely popular within photography. Trust me, Nolling photography is a real thing. And stock photography websites are absolutely full of this stuff. But more on that later. I'm sure you're dying to learn how to create your very own Nolling images in Midjourney. As I already said earlier, creating Nolling style images is probably one of the easiest tricks in Midjourney. It's so unbelievably simple, you're probably just gonna laugh in a moment. Let's start off with an extremely basic example. Remember this image right here? Here's what the prompt looked like. It's literally just Nolling of followed by the topic or type of items that you would like to lay out on the ground. So a very simple template would look a little bit like this. Perfect, that's it, time to wrap up. Who wants to go grab a beer? I'm just kidding. Did you really think that was it? When have I ever not done additional research on a topic? Even when it was something that seemed as simplistic as this. Anyway, I was curious to find out whether this was the only type of prompt that was able to produce images that looked like this. And sure enough, it's not. In fact, there are a whole bunch of ways that you can write your prompt and you'll get results that are very similar, if not almost the same as this. Okay, so let's start with option number two. In this example, I've simply turned Nolling into an adjective. I think it's also fair to assume that from Midjourney's perspective, the prompts are effectively identical. If we have a look at the images that this prompt produces, there's really no reason to think otherwise. So let's move on to option three. In this prompt, I'm using very different vocabulary. The word Nolling or Nold doesn't show up at all. Instead, I'm using words that effectively describe what knolling is. Another variation of this is perfectly arranged. What you'll notice in these images is that the power tools are all hanging on the wall. If you were expecting to see them on the floor, then you forgot to consider the importance of context. To get a similar effect as with the regular knolling prompt, you'd have to add direct overhead shot to your prompt. This communicates to Midjourney the exact camera angle that you want. And sure enough, the images look very different now, don't they? If you had used the word Nolling, then it's already clear to Midjourney what angle you need. Don't believe me? I told you so. Okay, so let's move on to option number four. This time I'm going to use aerial photography in combination with our chosen items. This will definitely make sure that the correct angle is used. However, as you can see, the positioning of the items isn't as neatly arranged, and the shot might be a bit too close to the ground. So let's make another slight change and add neatly arranged into the prompt. Will this tip the scales and produce images that more closely resemble Nolling photography? I think it does, but one could argue that it's a little bit more chaotic. And this is something that usually happens when you use aerial photography in this very specific context. 
It tends to fill the space with tons of items, leaving very little space in between the individual objects. It's clearly not as aesthetic. All right, so let me show you one more option that you have. Option number five involves the use of a image reference. My image reference looks like this. It's just a basic photo of some tacos that I got from Unsplash. In my prompt, I simply add the URL as an image prompt followed by the word Nolink. You might argue that I could have simply added Mexican food to my text prompt, and you're absolutely right. But I'm trying to demonstrate what you can do if you can't think of any specific words. If we have a look at the images, you can see that it mostly worked out fine. However, the reference image apparently wasn't clear enough, and I think Midjourney added some falafels into the image as well. This method also works with completely random objects such as a supercar, a house, or a grandmother. While the images you'll get aren't particularly useful, they're still quite amusing. And it's always fun to create some weird mashups. Anyway, enough about alternative nulling prompts. It's time to have a closer look at how you can exert more control over the primary nulling prompt. That's right, there's so much more you can do with this. Okay, so let's say you don't necessarily want to place your objects on a simple background, or you just don't like the one that Midjourney chose for you. You can control what the surface looks like by simply adding that information into your prompt. In this prompt, I first describe the type of items I would like to use. I then add additional information about what I would like to see on the underlying surface. And sure enough, our gear is now placed on top of snow. You might think that this is simply due to the topic, but it's not. I can do the same thing with tropical fruit if I want to. Sure, it looks a little bit different because the context is different, but it still works. In this example, I do the exact same thing. I take objects out of their normal context and place them on top of an unusual surface. And as you can see, it works nearly every time. Every now and then, you'll get shots from a slightly tilted angle. But that's actually great, because some people really want that. If you want to avoid it, then just add direct overhead shot to the prompt. This method can also be used to place your items directly inside of objects or other containers. So if I were to enter this prompt right here, I'm basically asking the journey to not only generate gold bars, but also to put them inside of a suitcase. Bear in mind that the aspect ratio that you use will also influence the composition of the image. In these videos, I tend to use 16 to 9 so you guys can see more of the images, but a different ratio might actually produce much better images. Here's another prompt, this time with surgical equipment on top of an operating table. I realize this theme might be a bit creepy and reminiscent of horror movies, but the point I'm trying to make is that nulling doesn't have to exclusively be used for super neat positioning of clothes and other gear. Okay, so now let's move on to layouts. So you probably think that layouts are more or less self-explanatory when it comes to nulling, but that actually couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, you have a surprising amount of control over the layout. Sometimes the difference is very obvious, and in some other cases, it's actually quite subtle. Let's start off with this basic prompt of some old whiskey bottles and glasses. There's nothing particularly special about this prompt. It produces some very typical nulling arrangements, some more and some less organized. But what if I add symmetrical layout to the prompt? Will that change anything? It sure does. In fact, it's even a bit extreme for my taste. And I wonder if we can soften that a bit. In this prompt, I've simply replaced symmetrical with equidistant, which implies that the objects should all have the same distance from each other. I'm not 100% sure whether this really had an impact, but something tells me this is more than just interesting noise. You make up your own mind. But I want to show you another one. In this one, I've picked something very specific and unambiguous. I want the bottles to form a circular shape. And sure enough, Midjourney will produce just that. The bottles now form a near-perfect circle. And you can also achieve the opposite by simply changing the keyword to chaotic. 
all of a sudden your neatly arranged bottles aren't so neatly arranged anymore. In fact, it mostly looks like someone had an awesome whiskey party. Okay, so here's a bit of an odd one, just to prove a point. I've taken out the reference to a specific layout, but I want to see a big pineapple somewhere in the middle. As you can see, this doesn't always work perfectly, but it does work. And with some proper experimentation, you can almost always get something that you can use. Okay, that's pretty cool, but there's one more thing that we need to talk about. I'm going to show you how you can control the color of the objects as well as the overall style that they're displayed in. In my first example, we're going to create a knolling of spaceship parts that are placed on top of red rock. For the most part, the equipment doesn't have any particular color. Some of the parts are clearly white, but overall, they're just rusty red. But if we add the tiny little word white in there, things change quite a bit. The parts are now clearly white, and they also look quite different. Now, so far, we've only been producing images that look photorealistic. And that kind of makes sense because knolling is mostly used in photography. But can we apply the same logic to other styles as well? Well, we sure can. Let's try a super simple prompt. We want our hiking gear to be displayed using illustration style. And Midjourney will happily oblige. Just imagine all of the creative ways how you might use these. This method is also very consistent. You can use it with nearly any style that you like. In this example, I've decided to go with line art. The images produced by this prompt are very typical black and white pencil art that we all know very well. Now, obviously there are hundreds of different styles that you can try, but I do want to show you two more specific ones. This style is called isometric 3D style, and this is very similar to some of the vector art sets that you'll commonly find on stock websites. And this style right here is just basic 3D style. This could potentially be used for product marketing or e-commerce websites. So you might be wondering, why does this all even matter so much? Sure, you can create pretty photos of stuff, arrange things, and turn them into different styles. Great. But so what? Remember how I said that knolling photography is really, really popular? Well, that's just it. These types of photos used to take tons of time to create. You'd have to create an entire mini set with all of the items, make sure that the lighting is right. And if you're doing it with food, maybe even spray some of that weird stuff on top of it to make sure that it looks really good in photo. Almost all of this is no longer necessary. Unless you're trying to showcase a very specific product with a unique design, none of that needs to be done anymore. Just think of all of those generic photos of merchandise and products that you see on e-commerce websites. Or the generic aerial shot of some food that is commonly used on websites or in restaurant menus and sometimes even by ghost kitchens in delivery apps. All of that can now be generated straight from within Midjourney. The sheer amount of work, time and money that you can save this way is going to have profound consequences for the stock photography market. So be prepared for what's to come. If you want to upgrade your prompting game in Midjourney and learn creative new ways of using the full spectrum of features that it has to offer, then make sure you check out some of these videos and playlists. And remember, keep on knowing and take care.